it's Car Kicks. Classics, custom sports cars and trucks, plus news, great places to go, and products you'll love. Don't forget to check us out on the web at carkicks.com. That's K-A-R-K-I-X.com and on Facebook and Twitter. Now, here's the host of Car Kicks, Bob Lang. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Car Kicks. Let's take a look at some of the happenings going on right now. Acura is counting on new and updated models, notably a new entry luxury sedan called the ILK and a redesigned RDX crossover to give them 180,000 sales for the year. Acura has faced some serious struggles in the last couple of years. They were given a, a lashing for getting rid of a, a nameplates like the Legend that was you know, very well uh, liked. They took hits for their quirky styling choices, the big bird beak that they had on recent models. Well, they've taken that grill and refined it. I kind of liked it. They've downsized it for 2012, and they've rolled out new products like the ILX, which is really aimed at first-time luxury buyers in the millennial generation. And they're thinking that the ILX alone will generate about 30000 in sales, and uh, they'll kick up their capacity if it really clicks with these young buyers, but they, they really need the whole wave to happen. So Honda Division has been increasing its marketing efforts and went for the big one with the uh, big Super Bowl ads most of you saw. Uh, for the, the, that's their first time advertising on the Super Bowl was this year, and the the ads that they ran were just incredible with Jerry Seinfeld, Le, Leno, and and uh, it was just an incredible set of commercials with the Soup Nazi and everything. Man, it really really stuck. In fact, it generated 14 million additional views of those ads on YouTube. So, and meanwhile, they're working with uh, their dealer network to come up with a new concierge program that'll give them improved customer service, not quite over the top like Lexus does. Or Mercedes does, but it'll be it'll be a very nice addition for Acura owners. Okay, classic car owners, will your vehicle be pictured in the 2013 old cars calendar? Well, not if you don't submit a high quality image. You only have a few days left. The old cars weekly staff is inviting their readers to submit color images of their vehicles for use in the collector edition calendars. And the closing date is very near, April 1st. That's uh, get them in. You got to email them or send them in on disk before April first. What they what they do is is they sub, usually get about two hundred cars, and they reduce that down to thirteen finalists. The criteria that they used in eliminating the images are things like uh, duplication of mark, duplication of model, color, era, and uh, usually have nothing to do with the quality or composition of the images sent in. In the years of doing their elimination process, they have learned a lot about what they would not like to see in a calendar submission. So here goes the do's and don'ts to refer to when preparing your submission. They only want high quality color slides, transparencies, or digital submissions of collector vehicles from every era of manufacture through 1988. If you've got a newer collector vehicle like a 1988, be patient and wait for possible participation in future old cars calendars they're they're probably going to be looking for stuff a little older than that for now but please note snapshots photocopies drawings paintings and any media other than color slides transparencies or digital images will not be considered also don't submit a slide made from a photograph as the resulting image is too grainy to use when they blow it up to the calendar page size they put emphasis on vehicles of american manufacture but outstanding examples of widely collected imported marks will also be considered each submission should depict a single, completely stock, unmodified from factory original vehicle, and no multiple vehicle shots, no visible objects mounted on the dashboard or suspended from the rearview mirror, and uh, there should be no people, no pets, no trophies or window stickers. Each vehicle should be photographed against a pleasant and appropriate, non-distracting background. Although if I were photographing a 1936 clown car from the circus, I'd probably have kind of a festive midway background. That's just me. Obviously, all vehicles submitted can't be used in the single calendar. Uh, a panel of old car staff members will make the final selections and consideration will be given to, among other factors, the quality of the photographic reproduction, the vehicular variety, you know what it is, and the appropriate mix of marks, models, and eras that they are assembling for the presentation. You should know that the images selected will be enlarged to get that calendar size. That means any grainy appearance would be magnified, so only the sharpest and clearest images can be used. Don't send them your Polaroids. In reviewing the hundreds of vehicles they get, it, it occurred to them that 
it was a shame to restrict the use to calendars only. So now they ask you to indicate whether or not you're willing to allow them to make copies to keep on file for other than calendar use, like a book or magazine covers, color plates, catalogs, show posters or newsletters or promotional materials, stuff like that. So if you if you have a mind to, if you're willing, just note on your submission that that's that it's okay for them to use them. Owners of the vehicles depicted in the calendar are going to be identified and each will get a copy of the calendar. Each submission should be accompanied by name, address, phone number of the owners, as well as the year, the mark, model, and body type of the vehicle depicted. And you have to get these submissions in their office no later than April 1st. You know, so you got time to email, FedEx, you can get it in because here's how it here's how it goes. If it's a digital image, it should be 300 DPI and saved as a JPEG, a TIFF, or a raw image. It should be as large as possible size-wise, at least the width of the calendar. The image can be 72 DPI, which is a, a default on a lot of things, but at that resolution, it has to be big in dimensions because when they scan it in, you know, it's if the amp, if the image is 72 DPI, 12 inches wide, and it's converted up to 300 DPI, the photo is going to be three inches wide and too small for use. So, get your stuff together, get your submit, get your picture. So get your picture together and uh, submit it to them by email. The address is oldcars at krause.com. That's k r a u s e dot com. Oldcars at krause.com. Or you can go to the Old Cars website and uh, get the address to send them a CD or a DVD. Remember, everything has to have the year, make, model, and owner's name in the subject line or the submission will not be considered for publication. So in the subject line goes the year, make, model, and owner's name when you send them that email to oldcars at krauss.com. And good luck. You know, if you, if you have some nice old shots, you can send them to carkicks.com and we'll put them on the Car Kicks website in the gallery. So feel free to send it or on the Facebook page. In fact, I think you can post them yourself on the Facebook page. I'll have to talk to the web diva and find out. But I'm pretty sure that's the case. Car Kicks will be right back. Coming up, it's the Car Kicks Toolbox. And now it's time for a Car Kicks Car Quiz. Why was the Indianapolis Motor Speedway nicknamed the Brickyard? Was it A, the site was originally a brick factory, B, the racetrack was built by a Terre Haute brick company, C, a strip of bricks was added to the podium in 1970, or D, the original track broke up and it was repaved with bricks? We'll have the answer in just a moment. Car Checks will perform a 155-point pre-inspection auto inspection almost anywhere in the USA. They have detailed auto inspection reports. If you're going to buy a car, you want to get it inspected. It's the, likely the second largest investment you'll make. Get the gold package and receive a Car Checks 155-point pre-purchase inspection, plus the added protection of Carfax. That's right, you'll get a Carfax vehicle history report. It's the Car Kicks Car Checks. Say it five times fast, but check it out today at carkicks.com. It's the Car Kicks Car Cap, a great ball cap for just $10. You can be a part of the ruling elite with your Car Kicks Car Cap. Stop being laughed at by your mom. Get the hat. Just 10 bucks plus tax and handling, and an agent of a semi-governmental agency will deliver it to wherever you get your U.S. mail. Get the Car Kicks Car Cap today at carkicks.com. That's K-A-R-K-I-X.com. And now the answer to your Car Kicks Car Quiz. The answer is D. The original tar and gravel track broke up after the first race in 1908, and so it was repaved with bricks. Over the years, asphalt took over, but a single strip of bricks remain at the start-finish line. That's your Car Kicks Car Quiz. Time for a look in the Car Kicks Toolbox. In the toolbox today is Griot's Garage. Well, not the whole garage. It wouldn't fit. I mean, you know how much stuff they have for sale. It's unbelievable. Uh, it's the Griot Garage Catalog. That's what you want in your toolbox Griot's Garage is driven to provide customers with exceptional products and customer service, and it's all backed by a world-class guarantee. Those sound like cliches, but they really are striving for perfection. They hold the highest standards at every turn in the stuff that they make. Uh, some companies buy car care products from mass producers, stick their label on the bottles, and call it their own. 
not uh, Griot's Garage. They develop, manufacture, and bottle their car care products right here in the USA to ensure everything you put on your treasured automobile is the finest quality. And if you go to some of the best-known detail shops in the country, you'll find their products there. Uh, And the job just doesn't end with Griot when you place your order. They want you to know proper application, so they teach it too. Uh, Education is a Griot Garage priority. Their customer service associates are friendly. They're extensively trained. So when you call or email with a question, they'll be able to help. Now, if you go to their website, you're going to find resources, uh, blogs, videos, articles, tech sheets, all at your fingertips just to help you use their products the proper way. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, they guarantee it. They know how stressful it is to have tools and products fail. They've taken to heart the words of Sir Henry Royce and created the finest car care line available. They have strict standards, extensive knowledge, and they cover everything they sell with a 100% satisfaction guarantee and a lifetime guarantee against defects. So you can rest easy, not worry, when you order something from Griot's Garage. And the list of products in Griot's Garage is almost endless. It's everything you could possibly need to have the most well-appointed, well-stocked, well-supplied garage around. So get your hands on the ultimate handbook for the automotive enthusiast. Just go to their website, fill out the form, and get the most recent handbook, the Griot Garage, the Griot's Garage Catalog. You know it's in the Car Kicks Toolbox. Don't forget to tell our sponsors that you heard about them on Car Kicks. That's how we keep the show rolling. Subaru is bringing its next generation crossover, the new XV Crosstrek, to the United States market. And man, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this one because wasn't so sure they were going to bring it to the U.S. And it's perfect for the Rocky Mountain states. But we'll all get a closer look at it at the New York Auto Show in just a little bit. The latest crossover in the Japanese maker's expanding line shares its undersides with the latest generation Impreza, a very cool car. The bonus is a bit more ground clearance, improving its off-road capability, or at least its ability to maneuver through snowstorms and other worldly hazards. The Subaru Crosstrek will have four-wheel independent suspension and the symmetrical all-wheel drive system offered in all Subaru products except the BRZ Sports Coupe. And it's going to come in just two trims, the Premium and the Limited. Both will be powered by the 2-liter boxer engine, making 148 horsepower and about 25 to 33 mpg. Final EPA numbers are not yet uh, out, so don't quote me. Standard issue is a 5-speed manual that will offer a hill hold function, which is cool, and it, it, it just keeps the car from rolling backwards when shifting into gear on a steep incline. The alternative gearbox for it is the Linear Tronic CVT, and while no conventional automatic is available, the CVT can be switched into a manual mode, simulating six individual gears. My neighbor with a new Impreza says, get the five-speed. Inside the interior will match the roominess of some mid-size cars. Folded down seat mode capacity will be 52 cubic feet. The Subaru XV Crosstrek made its global debut at the Frankfurt Motor Show last fall. The U.S. debut will be followed by a sales launch in September. And have you noticed how our market is not getting some of the products offered in other countries? Is it our regs are too tight or the others are too loose? Either way, I look forward to the XV Crosstrek. The mountain winters and distance to town make it a western Rocky Mountain dream come true. But it does have a it does have the Honda CRV and uh, Rav4 in its a competitive way as they get better mileage and Subaru is uh, making improvements in mileage. It's it's uh, it's a real battle in that little segment. And here comes Ford with the EcoBoost Escape next year. Watch the screen for your flight. Meanwhile, elsewhere around the world. British maker Jaguar Land Rover is the latest to ink a deal with a Chinese partner. do si do and dance your partner round and around Cherry Automobile Company this time. But with signs that the Chinese markets might, you know, be slowing down, uh, the question is whether the move is a little too little too late. China's ambitious Cherry Automobile Company, though, will make both Jaguar and Land Rover vehicles as well as powertrains at a facility over there in Asia, a market which has outsold the U.S. for the last several years. I mean, Buick sells more there than they do in the United States. Of course, the deal is subject to approval by Chinese regulators, which means break out a solar calendar. Uh, that's, that's a process that can take some quality time right out of your life. Fuji Heavy Industries has been waiting since last year for the go-ahead on a deal that would lead to production of its Subaru line in China. Nonetheless, officials at India's Tata Motors, which owns Jaguar Land Rover, are optimistic. Demand continues to increase significantly in China, but uh, some opinions or that that market is cooling. So you can believe the glass is half empty or half full. 
From the Detroit Bureau comes word that Volkswagen will create another 800 jobs at its new assembly plant in Chattanooga, Tennessee, as it pushes to meet demand for that new Passat. Uh, it comes on top of the previous plants that will that will now uh, put a thousand new workers to the factory that opened only last year. The, the new Passat would seem to be the star of the show. The Chattanooga plant is the first plant VW has operated in the U.S. in a quarter century, and it's a critical part of the commitment to boost sales to record levels here by 2018. VW's decision to build cars specifically for the U.S. market for the first time, including the all-new Passat sedan being produced in Tennessee, is having an effect. Sales of the new car are sprinting for the 2012 model year, helping Volkswagen mark its best monthly sales volume in four decades in February. Go get them, Volkswagen. I told you a couple shows back, didn't I say? Volkswagen is coming to get you. So <laughs> stay tuned. You know, I always thought BMW's little X3 SUV was small. <laughs> I was wrong. It's the big brother to the forthcoming X1. BMW's compact crossover, the X1, will finally arrive on American shores this fall as a 2013 model, three years after its European launch. It was originally scheduled to reach U.S. dealers in 2010, but because of strong European sales and a weak dollar-euro exchange rate, they put the whole thing on hold, electing to eventually bring the vehicle here as part of a mid-cycle refreshing for 2013. So BMW has said we'll get the facelifted 2013 X1, little nip and tuck action which will make its world debut at the New York Auto Show along with some other notable cars from BMW like the 2012 M6 convertible and also the M6 coupe and the 2013 X6 M SUV lovers and the 2013 640i Grand Coupe man it's good to be BMW more cool stuff for the New York Auto Show. Fisker Automotive has released drawings of its next new car, codenamed Project Nina. The startup company, which makes the hybrid Fisker Karma, has, a, has just a few details on the Nina, except that it's going to be a mid-size hybrid sedan that will sell for roughly half the price of the Karma, which starts at about $102,000. The Nina is hopefully going to go into production in 2013 at a former General Motors plant in Delaware versus Finland, where the Karma is built. In mid-February, Fisker said that it had suspended development work on the Nina because it was denied access to the balance of funds from a $528.7 million U.S. Department of Energy loan. In a statement, Fisker said that it had drawn only $190 million in DOE funds and that the Nina has been temporarily put on hold until fi financing either from DOE or elsewhere can be secured. Fisker's got to get their house in order before they start forging ahead with new cars. That's just my opinion. Mercedes-Benz is redesigning the GL SUV, and in the United States, they're going to drop the R-Class Crosswagon for 2013. This is from a report by Paul Leinert in the Inside Line. A Mercedes confirmed that it's going to unveil a redesigned 2013 GL Class at the auto show. They also said they're dropping the R-Class in the U.S. for model 2013. Now, the R-Class is going to continue to be assembled in Alabama. It, they're just going to ship it to other markets around the world. Uh, according to management, Mercedes will continue to sell the vehicle in Canada and Mexico after it's discontinued in the U.S. Uh, and it's simply because the customer trend in the U.S. has been towards the GL and ML and GLKs as opposed to the uh, more station wagony or cross wagon. The company continues to upgrade the Tuscaloosa plant, which is getting a $2.4 billion expansion, and that is in preparation for the production of the 2013 GL and the next generation C-Class. Should be interesting. Also from the from the guys at Inside Line comes news that the Subaru EyeSight system will roll out on Subaru models in the future. According to the report in Inside Line, the EyeSight system can stop the car even if the driver takes no evasive action. Subaru said such advanced systems have been the domain of high-end car makers like Mercedes-Benz. The system uses two cameras developed by Subaru and mounted inside the car on the upper edge of the windshield. According to Subaru, the setup reduces the potential for damage that could happen if it were a, like a bumper-mounted radar system. Subaru system bundles pre-collision braking, adaptive cruise control, lane departure, and sway warning. The system also is capable of pedestrian detection. And now I have to wonder, is it capable of mist detection, taking a sharp turn guardrail as an approaching pedestrian and causing it to automatically brake, which could really Screw you up. Uh, Subaru says below speeds of approximately 19 miles an hour, EyeSight is capable of detecting pedestrians in the vehicle's path and can activate in order to mitigate or even avoid a collision. 
Under certain circumstances, eyesight's able to bring the car to a complete stop. A at speeds above 19 miles an hour, the system can apply the brakes when an object is detected and will attempt to brake if the driver takes no evasive action. So the car's going to wait for you to twist the wheel, and if you don't, it's going to hit the brakes. I think. Now, even Subaru admits that the system has, quote, certain operational limitations, such as when weather conditions obscure the view of the cameras. Okay, but I haven't heard how that limitation will manifest itself in operating the vehicle if you're a properly vetted driver. So uh, let's wait and see as, as Subaru unrolls it. I hope it is a, a system that can be disabled if it proves to be... Um, effective only in average situations. And speaking of technological innovation, here's one that's been around for a lot of years, Toyota's subcompact Prius. The Prius C five-door hatchback, which is the newest member of the Prius family of hybrid vehicles, is off to a jackrabbit start since going on sale March 12th. In the first three days on the market, it sold 1,200 units. <laughs> and it's the baby of the bunch. But that made it one of Toyota's fastest selling vehicles. I mean, and it went by the Volt and the Leaf just like like a like a moonshot. Bob Carter, Group Vice President and General Manager of the Toyota Division, said a number of factors drive the auto market, and fuel prices is one of them. And with 53 miles per gallon in the city and priced under $19,000, the timing for Prius C couldn't be better. We have to agree. During the first half of March, the four-member Prius family, including the new Prius C, the small baby hybrid, the roomy, spacious, Prius V that fits the lifestyle of the young active family with more room. The regular old third generation liftback, the Prius that you know and love. And the new plug-in hybrid. Uh, really the only difference from the regular Prius is that it can be plugged in at conven convenient intervals. They all accounted for sales of 9,800 units in one month. Not bad, Toyota. More car kicks in just a moment. We'll be right back with more Car Kicks. And now it's time for a Car Kicks Car Quiz. Who was the first car company to introduce the three-point seatbelt? Was it A, Saab, B, Volvo, C, Peugeot, or D, Renault? We'll have the answer in just a moment. Car Checks will perform a 155-point pre-inspection auto inspection almost anywhere in the USA. They have detailed auto inspection reports. If you're going to buy a car, you want to get it inspected. It's the, likely the second largest investment you'll make. Get the gold package and receive a Car Checks 155-point pre-purchase inspection, plus the added protection of Carfax. That's right, you'll get a Carfax vehicle history report. It's the Car Kicks Car Checks. Say it five times fast, but check it out today at carkicks.com. It's the Car Kicks Car Cap, a great ball cap for just $10. You can be a part of the ruling elite with your Car Kicks Car Cap. Stop being laughed at by your mom. Get the hat. Just 10 bucks plus tax and handling, and an agent of a semi-governmental agency will deliver it to wherever you get your U.S. mail. Get the Car Kicks Car Cap today at carkicks.com. That's K-A-R-K-I-X.com. You wouldn't drink and drive. That would be stupid. But what most people don't realize is that texting has become an even greater danger. Many people assume the problem is mostly teens, but that's not the case. In fact, almost half of all uh, grown-up adults admit to texting while driving. 50% compared to only 34% of teens. Distracted drivers were responsible for over a half a million police reported crashes in 2008 alone. That's just huge, half a million crashes. Hey, keep your attention on the road, not on cell phones and other mobile devices. It's easy, just ignore it. If you can't do that, put the device in your trunk. And if you can't do either of those, don't drive a vehicle at all, because I'm driving here. I know you can't control how other people use their phones. You can control how and when you use yours. So turn off your phone before you turn on your car. If your car is cool enough, leave the radio off too. There's some music. This message brought to you by your friends at carkicks.com. Coming up, we'll take a peek inside the Car Kicks showroom. And now the answer to your Car Kicks car quiz. The answer is B, Volvo. The three-point seatbelt was invented by Volvo engineer Nils Bolin 
who was looking for a better way of keeping people secure in a collision. Lots of cars had two-point lap belts, and there were a couple of versions of three-point belts, but they weren't very effective, especially at high speed. Bolin and Volvo, a company fanatical about safety, knew there had to be a better way. He came up with an ingenious solution that combined a lap belt. He came up with an ingenious solution that combined a lap belt with a diagonal belt across the chest and anchored the straps low beside the seat so the geometry of the belts formed a V. The design meant the belt would stay put and not shift under a load. So the answer is B, Volvo, in 1959. And that's your Car Kicks Car Quiz. Today on Car Kicks, we have Jesse Mortensen, who is the founder of BarnFinds.com. Hi, Jesse. Hi, Bob. How did you come to building the website? What did you do before? I've actually built sites for a long time. I own a business. I, I build other websites, and, and this was just something I wanted to do for fun. So. so tell us a little background on your automotive history. I, I always have liked cars. I think probably inherited that from my dad. He, he was always into automobiles and had old cars and stuff, but when I was probably 13 or 14, I bought my grandpa's car that was actually a field find. It didn't run. It was out in my uncle's field and I dragged it home and thought I was going to restore it. Uh, sadly, it, it went back to the junkyard. I never did get it going, but since then I've, I've owned a lot of different cars. I've been into a lot of different kinds of cars. Uh, eventually settling on European sports cars are probably my favorites, but I was in the muscle cars. What are some of the favorites that you've had in the past? Oh, my favorites. I just had an Alfa Romeo GTV that was a lot of fun. Um, had a second gen RX-7 that was fun. It was a little little different, not as old. but The RX-7 was a very fast mid-engine car. I don't think a lot of people knew about that. Yeah, it, it was a it was a fun car. It handled really well, and I would still would like to get one that, that had a good clutch in it. So. <laughs> How long has BarnFinds.com been going on? It's only been about six months. It sure has seen a lot of growth in that time. How's the site organized? How can people get around it? Um, well, we divide things up into categories. So we have a barn find section. We have race cars, project cars. And you can sort them by origin, too, you know, like the American muscle cars, and German cars, all that. What are some of the most interesting cars that hey, you've seen on the site or that you've seen come through the site so far? Wow, it seems like every day we have something interesting. But I always like the, the Aston Martin barn finds. I know we had one that was a it was a field find and that generated a lot of interest there's been some user submissions that were really interesting like there was a jaguar e-type that was on a trailer out in the field and people were trying to figure out where it was and it generated a lot of interest too so i think uh, some of the comments you get are just almost as interesting as the cars that's right we we i always read all the comments because sometimes people will add things in there that you know i can't know everything about a car there's there's people that know everything about them and they they give us all the details so there's a lot of interesting conversations that go on how do people make submissions to the site um they can just email me at mail at barnfinds.com on the site there's there's a page that kind of explains it. Sometimes people submit them through Facebook, too. Just whatever works for them. How can fans help out the site, make it stronger, bigger, or help you in any way? I think just keep commenting and, and contributing that way, sending in submissions, and just telling their friends about it. We've, we've really grown by word of mouth. I know this summer we went down to Pebble Beach to the events there, Auto Week, and we were surprised how many people already knew about the site because they'd told friends, and it had just kind of grown on its own. It really gives people an opportunity to tap into all the hunters out there, all the pickers out there that are looking under rocks behind barns and in old garages to find these special cars. Yeah, that's right. We met a few in Pebble Beach that actually are professional barn finders, have Ferraris and things, and I won't mention any of their names, but they already knew about the site and were, were excited and said they were going to start sending in some of their finds, so we're looking forward to some of those. Well, it's a lot of fun to go to barnfinds.com and read the comments, see the cars, and uh, definitely encourage our listeners to sign up for the email and the RSS feed. That's right. They can get daily updates. As soon as we post new cars, they come on there. So some people like to do that if they're going to try to buy cars on eBay. They can get on there and try to get them first. So so if we see something in our local Craigslist or we see something in on uh, eBay, can we forward it to you? Yeah, please do. And you can get the link to barnfinds.com at carkicks.com. Car Kicks will be right back. And now it's time for a Car Kicks Car Quiz. What kind of car was Christine in the movie of the same name? A, a 1958 Plymouth Fury. B, a 1957 DeSoto Adventurer. C, a 59 Dodge Dart. 
or D, a 1958 Studebaker Commander Coupe? We'll have the answer in just a moment. Car Checks will perform a 155-point pre-inspection auto inspection almost anywhere in the USA. They have detailed auto inspection reports. If you're going to buy a car, you want to get it inspected. It's the, likely the second largest investment you'll make. Get the gold package and receive a Car Checks 155-point pre-purchase inspection, plus the added protection of Carfax. That's right, you'll get a Carfax vehicle history report. It's the Car Kicks Car Checks. Say it five times fast, but check it out today at carkicks.com. You wouldn't drink and drive, that would be stupid. But what most people don't realize is that texting has become an even greater danger. Many people assume the problem is mostly teens, but that's not the case. In fact, almost half of all uh, grown-up adults admit to texting while driving. 50% compared to only 34% of teens. Distracted drivers were responsible for over a half a million police reported crashes in 2008 alone. That's just huge! Half a million crashes! Hey, keep your attention on the road, not on cell phones and other mobile devices. It's easy, just ignore it! If you can't do that, put the device in your trunk. And if you can't do either of those, don't drive a vehicle at all, because I'm driving here! I know you can't control how other people use their phones. You can control how and when you use yours. So turn off your phone before you turn on your car. If your car's cool enough, leave the radio off too. There's some music. This message brought to you by your friends at carkicks.com. And now the answer to your Car Kicks car quiz. The answer is A, a 1958 Plymouth Fury. Christine is the story of a nerdish boy who buys a strange car with an evil mind of its own and his nature starts to change to reflect the cars. Christine, a Plymouth Fury with Fury, was a killing machine. The movie garnered cult status and the car caused lots of repaints on 58 Furies to match the movie cars. Twelve 1958 Furies were destroyed making this film. Sad, no, sad given its low production numbers. There are three Christines still in existence, all owned by movie fans. One is in the UK, but two remain stateside. One in Florida since 2005 and one in California since the end of the film. And that's your Car Kicks Car Quiz. Let's peek inside the Car Kicks showroom. In the showroom today is the Maserati Quattroport Sport GTS. Nice tight seams and smooth lines. Man, this car de de just defines the term luxury sports saloon. 440 horsepower at an operatic 7,000 RPM and a ton of torque at half that. The designers at Pininfarina have given this car a sportier edge but preserved the original feel. The new grille is, well, new, wider, has vertical slats like the Gran Turismo. It's a deeper set grille and framed by new fog lights and air intakes that have been a little enlarged to help the more powerful engine. The, the fog light cluster has also been redesigned in a titanium finish. The Quattroport Sport GTS has uh, xenon headlights and LED indicators. As you look at the doors, you see more aerodynamic mirrors, and the shape of the body below the doors and the car's lowered stance really lets the new model have a more contemporary look. I mean, the car looks like speed even when it's parked. And, and, the, and the Quattroport Sport GTS, it comes with 20s. You be rolling with 20s. And the Quattroport Sport GTS comes with 20s. And there are two new types, a set of multi-trident rims in light aluminum alloy or the standard seven-spoke light uh, alloy rims that have kind of gotten a, a dark chrome treatment. If you want to take your friends for a ride in comfort and at speed, this is your four-door. Now, as we walk around the back and behind the Quattroport in the showroom is the Gran Turismo MC Stradale. It's Maserati art in its purest form. It is a car that has the trident firmly in its hand, over its head, and it's growling. The Gran Turismo is a stunning and unique two-seater. Its, its styling shines excellent. Uh, the Gran Turismo is a stunning and unique two-seater. It, its styling shines excellence in performance, design, and comfort. It also has Maserati's Corsa competitive character. The MC is the harmonious blend of Italian craftsmanship and attention to detail with tried and tested track technology. It's art. The result is the fastest, lightest, and most powerful car in the Maserati range. It's designed to be a track day hero. It's lighter than any current Maserati thanks to new uh, carbon ceramic brakes from Brembo and the slim 20s. The car's springs have been stiffened by 8% at the front and rear, so you, you get a little more optimal handling. And when you crank it up, this Maserati even sounds like it belongs on the track. 
The rear silencers are smaller and lighter than on the Gran Turismo standard, creating a richer, louder exhaust sound. In sport mode, over 4,000 RPM, and in race mode all the time, the exhaust bypass flaps, which bypass the silencer altogether, open, creating an even louder exhaust note. However, before you sign up for the full-on Gran Turismo MC, know that the car sounds louder in all modes inside as well, because sound insulation in the cockpit has been reduced. You know, Maserati history has produced some of the finest sports racers the world has ever seen. They were fielded by drivers of the caliber of Fangio and Moss. And then there's you. Yes, you. Maserati has a performance driving school, so you'll appreciate the full measure of the car. It's based on a fleet of 13 dedicated cars that are fitted with telemetry and video and taught by professional GT race drivers. The classes range from mild to freaking wild. So sign up when you buy your Maserati. Maserati's developed a global policy for the protection and respect of the environment also. Uh, Maserati or its authorized dealers have taken steps to ensure that vehicles that have reached the end of their life can be disposed of with minimal environmental impact. For those of you keeping up on the beats, you've already caught on why I mentioned this. It means that less cars are at the auction, less collector Maseratis from recent decades, making the mark even more exclusive. So if your Tio Gino has one in the backyard and you're so inclined, you might want to stake your claim or make your move before it's recycled. And that's the Car Kick Show route for this week. Car Kick spoke at SEMA with Bill North, Vice President at Classic Design Concepts, about their RTR Mustang, developed with drifting champion Vaughn Gittin Jr. Hi, Bill. Welcome to Car Kicks. Hey. Tell us what uh, what is going on at uh, Classic Design Concepts. Oh, be happy to, Bob. Thanks so much. We've got a number of things to promote this week, but uh, first and foremost, it's our Mustang RTR package. Mustang RTR is a, is a ready to rock package. Uh, ready to rock is, a, is an acronym from, from Vaughn Gittin Jr. himself. He won the Formula Drift Championship for 2010 uh, in his uh, Falcon Tire Monster Energy Drink uh, Ford Racing sponsored Mustang. And uh, as a Detroiter, we're, we're all happy that we see a, a, a Detroit car company and now, now dominating a, a really exciting new sport in Formula Drift. And basically what we're doing is we're able to create drift racing, drift exposition excitement into Ford dealerships throughout not only the U.S. but the entire world. It's a dealer installed package. So what's wonderful for every Ford store is that they take their 2011 uh, GT Mustangs, the, the brand new 5 liter, which is doing tremendously well. It's, it's born with 412 horsepower. So we enhance that with more drift inspired components. Uh, it's a 46 piece upgrade from front to rear, which brings that kind of excitement and unique attributes for a Mustang owner into the, into the drift crowd. You wanna know what's on it? Please. All right, cool. Uh, we'll start at the front. We've got our chin spoiler, CDC manufacturers at chin spoiler. Uh, Vaughn Gittin worked directly with us to, uh, to add a splitter to our chin spoiler. We also added front supports. So, How does the split help? Well, the split creates downdraft. So when you're a championship drift, drift racer, you're trying to keep your vehicle planted in, in uh, a controlled drift type maneuver. So that, that component helps to, uh, to create the downforce and keep it planted where Vaughn needs it to be planted in specific areas. So moving for, further, further down the vehicle, go from front to back. We've got the Falcon tires. Uh, obviously the Falcon had to be a must. It's, uh, it's a sponsor and it's, uh, it's an incredible tire and it's part of our package. Also our RTR wheels that uh, are a beautiful looking complement. We use this black matte charcoal wheel pattern on any color Mustangs. They look terrific. They pick up the styling cues of all of our charcoal black components. So moving forward, the graphics are part of the kit with, with hood and side, side graphics. Moving down the side, we've got our, our side splitters, which are, which are a, a very nice complement. Uh, they don't require paint work because they come just in black, Henry Ford style. And dealers appreciate the opportunities where they can buy the RTR kit complete on a pallet, all 46 pieces ready to install. They don't have to do any paint work. Everything they do is appearance and performance related. I should also mention that included in the RTR package from CDC, we've got shocks, struts, and springs. These are all Ford racing components, OEM quality. Uh, it lowers the vehicle uh, one full inch to help with the appearance and drivability. You must have quite a relationship with Ford to have them 
be a direct partner? Sure. Well. CDC is a 20-year-old company. Uh, we've been a tier one supplier to Ford Motor Company. We have, uh, we're, we're not far from Dearborn and Novi, Michigan. Uh, we're very proud of our position of supporting Ford for uh, not just recently, but really since 1990. And, but not to take credit, RTR came together not because of CDC. Frankly, it, it came together because of Vaughn Gittin Jr. Uh, Vaughn sought us out and wanted a company that could build his vision. And so it's as if Classic Design Concepts and Vaughn Gittin became married and this is our child, if you will. It's some baby you got there. Well, well. thank you, thank you. <laughs> what else can you tell us about the RTR? Well, again, just to, to finalize the, the, the kit completely, in the back of the vehicle we have a rear diffuser. We have a, uh, a extensive interior upgrades. I mean, we want this this to be not only to be seen from the outside, but the in as well. In as well. Uh, instrument cluster badging, 12 volt receptacle badging, shift knob badging, floor mats that are RTR, and then most importantly is the fact that each vehicle is signed by Vaughn Gittin Jr. and numbered. This vehicle here, for example, is number 017. It's the 17th vehicle that we've built. It's autographed by Vaughn Gittin Jr. It's badged as number 17. Very, that's a very exclusive crowd to be a part of. And I would assume because of the, the, the component nature of it, it's also very affordable. It is. Yeah, the whole package is under $10,000 uh, uh, installed through a Ford dealership, uh, starting with a, uh, a 2011 GT 5 liter. So for, for uh, all this content for under $10,000 with, uh, with Vaughn's input and our, our acumen of building products properly that will, will hold up and be backed by a, a 20 year old manufacturer. If you want a, a Mustang that looks a little different than other folks, RTR is turnkey. You don't have to spend a lot of time seeking different components. Um, we do all the work, it, everything fits as a system. And I guess the only thing I would, I would mention that, you know, in working through CDC, we've got a couple of components that are not part of the RTR package that certain folks might want to add to the vehicle. And those are specifically, this is our light bar. Uh, light bars are for convertibles only. So it's a styling product. It, it adds uh, a lot of look to the vehicle. Uh, we don't call them roll bars, but they definitely do help the overall stability of the vehicle. And so that's an upgrade on an, on an RTR. If it were a convertible, we could, we could upfit it with, with our, our light bar as well. And then lastly, the product that, that we have is the, the new five liter shaker hood system. It's a functional attached to the air box system, a cold air kit that not only helps your vehicle breathe better, but look better and again, be, be different than other folks. Really reminds me of the 69 Mach 1, doesn't it? Yes, absolutely. It's a very beautiful piece of, of work and uh, that would make any Mustang owner proud. Oh yeah. Well, thank you, Bill. We thank appreciate you. You, the opportunity to come and see this magnificent car. Sure. If you're out there and you want to get involved in the sport of drifting, you could sit in your garage and hammer things together and not wonder and, and wonder whether or not it's going to hold together when you're sure. in the performance mode. Or you can go down to your Ford dealer and ask for the RTR package. Right. Find out more at carkicks.com. And now it's time for a Car Kicks Car Quiz. What make and model car did Steve McQueen drive in the movie Bullet? Was it A, a 69 Charger RT, B, a 1970 Dodge Challenger RT, C, a 1968 Ford Mustang GT, or D, a 1967 Cougar Eliminator? We'll have the answer in just a moment. Whether you have one car or 30 that represent a big investment, you want it to run its best so it lasts a long, long time. Well, there's technology, new technology, that can help you do that. It's called a pulse plug. Here's why its technology should be in your engine. Until now, every gallon of gas you bought was ignited by a simple but ancient spark plug. It's outdated technology that's barely changed in 100 years. Until now, with Pulse Star Pulse Plugs, you can change to a new, eco-friendly, advanced technology igniter to make every drop of gas burn better and cleaner. Here's how it works. Electrical energy from the engine's ignition coil is stored in the Pulse Star Pulse Plugs built-in capacitor. At the exact moment it's needed, that energy is released at an amazingly powerful and quick 2 nanosecond high energy pulse. The result? Improved combustion efficiency. Your vehicle burns fuel more effectively, giving you improved MPG, less emissions, and better overall drivability. 
even the fashion-conscious Prius in an EPA fuel consumption lab saw notable improvements in MPG. Pulse plugs may look similar to spark plugs on the outside, but inside the technology advances of Pulse Star are evident and generates a spark with 20,000 times greater energy than any spark plug. Don't wait another tankful. You can find Pulse Star Pulse plugs at Advanced Auto Care, O'Reilly Auto Parts, and at any auto zone near you. Or check us out on the web too at PulseStarPower.com. That's P U L S T A R Power.com. PulseStarPower.com. You wouldn't drink and drive, that would be stupid. But what most people don't realize is that texting has become an even greater danger. Many people assume the problem is mostly teens, but that's not the case. In fact, almost half of all uh, grown-up adults admit to texting while driving. 50% compared to only 34% of teens. Distracted drivers were responsible for over a half a million police reported crashes in 2008 alone. That's just huge. Half a million crashes. Hey, keep your attention on the road, not on cell phones and other mobile devices. It's easy. Just ignore it. If you can't do that, put the device in your trunk. And if you can't do either of those, don't drive a vehicle at all, because I'm driving here. I know you can't control how other people use their phones. You can control how and when you use yours. So turn off your phone before you turn on your car. If your car's cool enough, leave the radio off too. There's some music. This message brought to you by your friends at carkicks.com. And now the answer to your Car Kicks car quiz. The answer is C. A Highland Green 1968 Mustang GT 390 Fastback was the car. Steve McQueen's character in 1968's Bullet, Lieutenant Frank Bullet, was chased by a black Dodge Charger RT through the streets of San Francisco in what is considered to be one of the greatest chase scenes ever caught on film. Bullet was the first movie to show close-up shots of the driver, adding even more drama to the scene. Even now, the Bullet chase scene is the acme of all movie chase scenes. So the answer is C, a 1968 Mustang GT 390 Fastback. And that's your Car Kicks Car Quiz. Time for a look in the Car Kicks Toolbox. In the toolbox today is something we all wish we had in the shop. If you have one now, you're lucky. These are made in Texas with a Texas-style guarantee. And they're made with quality workmanship and a patented design. That would all sound good if it was something you could use, wouldn't it? Well, it is. It's a media blaster and a blast cabinet made by Lake Buchanan Enterprises, right in the middle of Texas. The barrel blaster and the blast master. One is the cabinet style, and the other for larger items like a 60 Chrysler. That would be the Blast Master. It's on wheels with a built-in funnel, ceramic nozzles available in four sizes, a gauge relief valve, 10 foot of hose, and it carries 150 pounds of abrasive. You can use aluminum oxide, glass beads, or walnut shells. Same as the cabinet model, the Barrel Blaster. Now, the Barrel Blaster, my fave, is a great tool for a wide range of applications. Automotive restoration, gun refinishing, glass etching, surface preparation, rust and paint removal, all of them are a cinch, and really the applications are endless. The unit is tough enough for industrial use, but the cool thing is it's affordable enough for any home shop. With jobs being lost overseas, it's nice to see an American company come along that has something that is both affordable and works great. I'd say Yankee Ingenuity, but it's from Texas, you know. At uh, $299, the Barrel Blaster is the deal. It's built from what looks like a 55-gallon drum and outfitted with a blasting gun and gloves, internal work light, 12 by 16 viewing window, uh, easy access drain for media changes, and an innovative shop vac connection for dust collection. Now, shipping for the Barrel Blaster doesn't hurt either because what they do is they put all the parts, stand, everything comes packaged inside the barrel, and then it's shipped inexpensively. Assembly is easy. All parts are labeled and require no special tools. The viewing area is great, and the 50-pound media capacity is more than enough for all the grit you need to clean off a part. The shop vac port is perfectly sized, and the 23-inch by 33-inch work area offers plenty of capacity for larger parts up to 10 by 16. Overall, the Barrel Blaster is a well-built American-made blasting cabinet with an excellent value point. We find it perfectly suited for the shop who needs to blast parts on a regular basis, as well as a hobbyist or a gearhead at home. I know I want one, and you can find out more about it on our links page at carkicks.com. K-A-R-K-I-X.com. 
It's spring and a young man or woman's fancy turns to getting their cool cars out and going for a good time somewhere, whether it's a hot rod cruise or whatever. A lot of you guys are in clubs and clubs are a really great way to raise money for charity. And so I want to encourage that. You guys can set up a car show and then donate the, the funds to charity. A lot of you already do this, but for those that don't, I'm, I'm here to spark the fire. It's not that tough. You're going to form a committee in your club, get some volunteers to organize the event, decide what kind of cars you want at your event. If you're going to judge or exhibitors or offer prizes, decide who's going to go scare up a sponsor to provide prizes, find a location for the event, check with your local park and rec department. They'll be The municipal staff will be able to help you identify what licenses you need, what codes you need to comply with, and be sure to contact the fire marshal to let him know what's going on and see if there are any special requirements for him. You can bring in vendors for the event. You can work with them that you get a percentage of their food and beverage sales that go to the charity. Bouncy jumps for the kids, the little inflatable jumps. Uh, if it's going to cost a lot of money to put it all together, you know, if you decide to build a, a really big event, consider taking out insurance to cover cancellation. You know, when doing a classic car show for fundraising, the, you want to determine who the charity is going to go to and get a hold of the executive director to ensure that the partnership between you and that charity is going to work. Uh, you need to also determine what percentage of the proceeds are going to go to the charity, and what to the club, or if it's all going to charity. People love to see classic cars on a beautiful day. Spring is here. Pick a date and a location for the show and set a price for admission. You can charge a fee to your club members to show their car and an admission fee or one or the other. Make sure you get your, your members involved right away and solicit cars to be shown. Make sure they know when and where they need to be to, to uh, participate. Again, you know, keep an eye out. Make sure that your club has the appropriate insurance to do this. When you advertise the show, you get the word out to the radio and TV. They're going to want cars to make a great video. And uh, the excitement makes great audio. So the radio and the TV stations are going to respond. Try and find some online media that is localized, that will also respond and have to make sure that all the information goes to the charity so that they can disseminate the information out their direction too. And this is my way of encouraging you as clubs, as classic car, muscle car, custom car, low riders, it doesn't matter. If your club doesn't do it now, I'm encouraging you to have a show and help a charity in your local neighborhood. Everybody wins. Car Kicks will be right back. And now it's time for a Car Kicks Car Quiz. What Japanese company's name means 50 bells? Is it A, Subaru, B, Isuzu, C, Mitsubishi, or D, Suzuki? We'll have the answer in just a moment. Car Checks will perform a 155-point pre-inspection auto inspection almost anywhere in the USA. They have detailed auto inspection reports. If you're going to buy a car, you want to get it inspected. It's the, likely the second largest investment you'll make. Get the gold package and receive a Car Checks 155-point pre-purchase inspection, plus the added protection of Carfax. That's right, you'll get a Carfax vehicle history report. It's the Car Kicks Car Checks. Say it five times fast, but check it out today at carkicks.com. It's the Car Kicks Car Cap, a great ball cap for just $10. You can be a part of the ruling elite with your Car Kicks Car Cap. Stop being laughed at by your mom. Get the hat. Just 10 bucks plus tax and handling and an agent of a semi-governmental agency will deliver it to wherever you get your U.S. mail. Get the Car Kicks Car Cap today at carkicks.com. That's K-A-R-K-I-X.com. And now the answer to your Car Kicks Car Quiz. The answer is B, Isuzu. It literally means 50 bells in Japanese. The brand was made popular in the U.S. by a sales campaign in which people could not pronounce the name correctly. And another featuring a character named Joe Isuzu, a perpetually smiling super liar and shady salesman played by David Leisure, who would say anything or do nearly anything to make the Isuzu look good, including using taglines like... If I'm lying, may lightning hit my mother. Good luck, Mom, appeared on the screen underneath Joe's face. Or, you have my word on it. And, it has more seats than the Astrodome. Isuzu partnered with General Motors, and Isuzu pickups and SUVs are still sold overseas and are very popular in Indonesia. In the United States, only the commercial vehicles are available, while the passenger vehicles are no longer sold. And that's your Car Kicks Car Quiz.
Well, I hope you had a good time today on Car Kicks. We learned all about the latest things, stuff coming up to the New York Auto Show. Saw the Maseratis in the showroom and uh, learned just uh, about a great new catalog you can get from Griot's Garage. Join us next week on Car Kicks. Heidi, is there anything else we can do right now? That's all for now. See you right here next time with more Car Kicks. Join us on the web at carkicks.com. That's K-A-R-K-I-X.com. And on Facebook and Twitter. Car Kicks is a production of Spirited USA, who is solely responsible for its content. Copyright 2011. All rights reserved. Hey, and don't forget to mention us when you visit our sponsors, all right? Hasta la vista, baby!